Let's head out to Tuscaloosa where the Tide are hosting a big visit weekend as LSU came to town. Big game, big win, big name recruits on campus. Bama knows this failing, and so do their fans. So in this video, we're going to hit on two important official visitors. The number two ranked 2025 quarterback was in Tuscaloosa this weekend, and his decision is coming soon. Plus, we're going to figure out Alabama's running back situation. But first, Bama fans, hit subscribe to the On3 Recruits channel. We got a lot going on. We need you to be a part of it. Please hit subscribe for me. Okay. Let's bring in Joseph Hastings from Bama Online to talk more. And I want to start with the official visitors. Of course, there was Jay Sean Ross from Kansas City and then also Elias Williams, who is committed to Missouri. He was on campus. And then unofficially, Solomon Williams was there. Now, he's a big time four star edge out of the Tampa Bay area. I'm noticing that Alabama had three versatile defensive linemen that can all play the edge position. So I just want to know how many of these guys can Alabama take and how do you see it all shaken out? Yeah, so just looking at those trio of prospects right there, Elias Williams, 6'4", 270, 275 pounds, put on about 30, 35 pounds in the offseason of weight, uh, so he could potentially put on an additional 10, 15, uh, 20 more and potentially yeah. slide inside of the defensive line. So okay. I don't know if he'll necessarily be an edge rusher, that traditional Jack linebacker mm -hmm. in Alabama's defensive scheme as a Jay Sean Ross and a Solomon Williams would be. Um, so I can see him potentially lining up anywhere along the defensive line with his hands in the dirt. As for Solomon Williams, you know, he's that he's that traditional Jack outside linebacker for Bama. Um, you know, the ones that they type, they like to recruit, uh, signed a few of them last cycle. And then with Jay Sean Ross, he's an intriguing one because, you know, Alabama extended an offer just over a week ago. Kind of want to get him on campus, you know, um, you know, see, see where things stand with him physically, just kind of where he's at. So we'll kind of have a little bit more of an idea following his official visit with the Crimson Tide. But um, definitely, definitely, um, you know, something to look at in terms of how Alabama bought all three in. Uh, definitely interested in, in those three right there. And we'll kind of see how it plays out. Vijay Durr recruitments and hoping to catch up with uh, the official visitors soon. Yeah. Now let's talk a little bit about Solomon Williams, because I think the timing of this visit is interesting to me because coming out of the summer, we thought maybe he'd be ready to make a decision. It seemed like Alabama was in a really good spot. As the season gets going, it felt like things were trending towards Texas A&M. I think our, our coworker, Jerry Hamilton put in a pick for the Aggies even a couple weeks ago, but their season began to spiral, and now he's back in Tuscaloosa. What do you make of this visit and where things stand now with Solomon Williams? Yes, yeah, so Solomon was actually supposed to be back at Alabama September 9th for the game against Texas. He, he took that official visit uh, with the Crimson Tide back in June, and, you know, at the time, it was like, oh, man, he wasn't able to make it out there. Is there a little bit of concern? Then he made it out to Texas A&M for a couple of visits. Interestingly, though, one of those visits was his official during the weekend that Alabama came into town and beat Texas A&M at Cal Field. Uh, and then Bama was able to get him on campus this weekend for the LSU game. Mm -hmm. Possibly, by all counts, the, the most electric atmosphere, electric crowd there at Bryant-Denny Stadium this season. So, um, you know, just in terms of how the visits have lined up, how he decided to push back his commitment time frame from shortly around the summer to maybe mid-October to potentially coming soon. This visit could potentially help out Alabama just in terms of when it was placed. And, you know, I just got off the phone with Solomon. Alabama is on his short list. They're continuing to recruit him hard. Um, you know, he enjoyed his experience there at, at, at Alabama. And we'll see if a decision is coming soon. But um, just in terms of the timing of it it, it, it seems to have been beneficial for the Crimson Tide. Yeah, especially if a decision comes soon. Now, we'll wait and see what exactly happens with Solomon Williams. But if this ends up being his final visit before he makes his announcement, then I do like the Tide's chances. All right. I also want to kind of figure out the running back position right now for Alabama in 2024 because Kawan Lacey was on campus. He's the four-star running back from the state of Georgia that was committed to Nebraska for much of the cycle, but just decommitted two weeks ago. He was in Tuscaloosa this weekend. Now, Daniel Hill was also supposed to be there. He's the big 6'2", 230-pound back out of Mississippi that's been on campus about 15 times. No exaggeration. Now, he did not show up this weekend. No big deal. But then I also saw a new offer went out. And you don't really see this happen too much with Alabama's current class. A new 2024 running back offer went out. So, Joseph... Where do things stand with this new offer? Where's Daniel Hill at? And how does Kawan Lacey now factor into this? 
Yeah, so the new offer is Jaden Ball, Arkansas commitment out of Georgia, 6'1", 215-pound running back. So you're kind of starting to see a trend a little bit here big with backs. the type of running back that Alabama <laughs> – yes, big backs that Alabama is recruiting. And Jaden actually talked about that with me during our conversation, how Alabama has a history of producing those big backs and how they've been able to sustain themselves – in the league, um, you, you know, even after playing at Alabama for a few years. So, um, you know, just in terms of where things stand with him, he's potentially looking at a visit to Alabama for their final home game of the season, November 18th against Chattanooga. We'll see if that gets locked in and if a potentially an official visit will come after that. We know he just took a visit to Florida for the Arkansas game. So, you know, the Gators are are in the mix there. Um, you know, so you got to see two two options for him you know obviously he's committed to Arkansas but considering Florida got to see two of them in person and may see Alabama this month we'll see if there, there's a visit lined up to Georgia Tech but mm -hmm. Alabama's early on in the pursuit with him you know they visited his school about a week before they extended an offer to him a communication yeah. had started as early as his junior year so it's not like someone who uh, completely came out of nowhere for them you know he's kind of been on their radar but an offer was just extended and you know we'll kind of see where things go there as for Daniel Hill, you know, obviously it's not necessarily too much of a concern when he doesn't visit Alabama just because of how many times he's been on campus. You said 15. Honestly, it could be twice as much just because he's <laughs> been on campus uh, so many times. He's lost track himself, and he's actually visited Alabama before his recruiting process even started. His, his father is a coach at Meridian High School, uh, Raekwon Davis, uh, eventual Alabama signee. Um, you know, uh, attended Meridian, mm -hmm. um, and, and Daniel ended up taking a few visits to Alabama early on before he was even a recruit. So there's a lot of history there between him and the Crimson Tide, but we know South Carolina's firmly in the mix. We know Tennessee's also in the mix with him as well. And then Kawan Lacey, you know, waiting for returns from this visit here, but Alabama is one of those schools that, um, you know, is pushing hard for him. You know, he, he's reciprocating interest, obviously showing that he's uh, by taking this visit to Alabama. And once again, kind of as is the case with, uh, Jaden Bob, they're able to get him on campus for an unofficial later this month. You know, will an official visit be taken later by Lacey? Kind of remains to be seen, but um, mm -hmm. definitely some options there for the Crimson Tide based on senior evaluation, uh, what they like from those guys. And Daniel Hill's obviously been a priority for a long time. Yeah, so they got options. I don't know exactly who they'll sign, but I know they're looking for a big back in 2024. And like you said, they got three good options there on the board. We'll continue to watch that now. And under the radar storyline for the weekend, I think was Alabama versus Florida Gators on the recruiting trail. All week, the Gators were trying to get four-star corner Jameer Grimsley, who's committed to the Tide, from Tampa on campus in Gainesville for their game this weekend. It looked like he was going to make it there. And then all of a sudden on Saturday, we hear that Jameer Grimsley actually showed up in Tuscaloosa. Not only that, but Alabama got Florida four-star uh, linebacker Darius Hayes on campus. So they kind of pulled the okie doke on him. It looked like Jameer was going to go to UF. Instead, Darius Hayes shows up at Alabama. What's going on? I mean, obviously, first of all, with Jameer, do you think this kind of solidifies things or should... Uh, Alabama fans still feel a little concerned. Then we'll get to a Darius Hayes in a second. Yeah, you know, obviously, you know, you hear about Jameer and, you know, the, the fandom of Florida, you know, um, you know, being a Florida fan. Uh, mm -hmm. But here's what we know about him just based on the visits. One, he hasn't taken a visit to Florida this year, uh, this season, I should say. Uh, visited for the Florida-Georgia game, but obviously that was a neutral side game. Right. When Florida had that big game against Tennessee on September 16th, he opted to go to USF and watch the Alabama-USF game instead of going to the Florida-Tennessee one. Um, you know, visited um, Bama for multiple games a season. And, you know, what ended up happening here is that his mother was able to get time off um, you know, and, and able to take this visit to Alabama. It's her first game day um, at Brian Denny Stadium. So she really wanted to go um, and, and they opted to make that decision and it ended up working out really well for them, you know, coming from Tampa to Tuscaloosa that it was a night game. So they were able to make it work. Um, you know, we'll see if, if a visit to Florida ends up taking place. They do play Florida State this month. Yeah. Uh, Florida State could potentially receive a visit there as well. But, um, you know, in past conversations, uh, Jameer has just remained firm with the Crimson Tide, uh, has stayed locked in. And, you know, the visits have kind of been evident of that. With Adarius Hayes, you know, he was a name that actually had kind of popped up a few months ago. Um, you know, Alabama uh, went to his school during the spring evaluation period. So we know that we knew that they were that he was kind of on their radar at the time. Uh, waiting for feedback return from this trip here what this was about there's a 
strong, heavy Tampa presence um, at this Alabama game, yeah. as you can tell, with Solomon Williams and uh, Jameer Grimsley and Alabama commit Joseph Ayanada. So definitely a strong Tampa presence there. And we'll, we'll, we'll wait to see what happens there. But, um, you know, that definitely a storyline to pay attention to for sure. Yeah. And uh, Darius has said all the right things pertaining to his commitment to UF. But he's showed up a couple times now in Coral Gables, visiting Miami, I think, on one or two weekends. Now he's showing up at Alabama, so maybe there is a little bit more to his recruitment than he's leading on. Keep an eye on that one as well. All right, I want to talk about George McIntyre, the number two ranked quarterback in the 2025 class. You got LSU, Tennessee, Alabama, UCLA. There's a few others, but he's inching closer to a decision, and as time goes by, every visit that he takes gets more and more important. I think he's probably going to decide in February. So we're looking at what, like two, three months max at uh, before the number two ranked quarterback in the country is off the board for the 25 class. What's your feeling? What What do you read when you talk to George McIntyre and where Alabama stands in all of this? So I think the first thing that Alabama fans will talk about when discussing the recruitment of George McIntyre is Julian Sane, because Julian Sane, the number one overall quarterback in the 2024 class is committed to Alabama very solid with the Crimson Tide, hasn't taken any visits, and is expected to be on campus as soon as next month for bowl prep. Mm -hmm. So a lot of Alabama fans go there. I talked to George a couple months ago about this, and he said that he's actually really cool with Julian, has seen him at a few of these quarterback retreats, and would love to be his teammate. So, um, you know, I had posed that question to him, and he, he seems just fine with, you know, Alabama having – um, the top-ranked quarterback in the class ahead of him if he was to decide to to choose the Crimson Tide, obviously. Look, he, he's looking at their quarterback production, their development, the history of guys that they've been able to put in the league, how, how their last four starters prior to um, uh, prior to Jalen Milrow have gone to the NFL uh, and our starting quarterbacks, you know, in the in the National Football League, Tua Tagovailoa, Jalen Hurts, Mac Jones, Bryce Young. So he's definitely looking at that and taking that into consideration. He's also built a good relationship with Tommy Reese as well, offensive coordinator slash quarterbacks coach there at Alabama. He's been to Alabama a few times, has established connections with a few of Alabama's commitments, most notably Ryan Williams and Jamie French, two five-star wide receiver commitments for the Crimson Tide. So, um, you know, definitely the connections are there, the bonds are there, the quarterback development, he's looking at that. Now it's just getting, it just remains to be seen when he ends up making that decision, like you said, is this going to be his final visit? Will he end up taking some junior day visits, you know, in January? How much could that play into uh, his final decision? But uh, Alabama is definitely one of those top schools in his recruitment, and they're pushing hard for him. All right. Well, uh, you know, I don't know if you know, but I've put in a prediction on the recruiting prediction machine for George to Alabama. How do you feel about that? You confident in my pick? we'll see what remains to be seen with that one but you know once again with Alabama and top quarterbacks you just can't rule them out you know and especially you know from Tennessee they were able to land Ty Simpson a couple cycles ago uh George George really likes the the environment there at Alabama and um yeah Josh we'll, we'll see about your prediction there it, it could be true we'll see you know yeah Bama's we will see I know it's a heated battle LSU Tennessee Alabama, all right there. We'll see what happens with George McIntyre. But today, Joseph Hastings, appreciate you stopping by on a busy day, catching up with all this Alabama recruiting intel. Josh, thank you so much for having me on. I really appreciate it. Free Recruits channel. We have a new page dedicated only to recruiting. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button right now.